Everton, a club that a lot of football fans and pundits had big hopes and expectations for heading into the season. Yes, it was always going to be a tough task to replace Romelu Lukaku and still remain a viable side, but with the money spent on the team over the transfer window, many thought Ronald Koeman's side had built well for the future. Fast forward a few months and after nine games played, Everton are sitting in the relegation zone in 18th position. Ronald Koeman has been sacked and the club are now looking for answers. Today, we are self-appointing ourselves as the new Everton manager. Not only will we rebuild the Toffees for this season, we will rebuild them for the future. We will make Everton European champion. Today, we are rebuilding Everton. G'day guys, how's it going? It is Jared HD here. Welcome back to another rebuilding video. Today, of course, we are going to be rebuilding Everton. Also, if you're wondering why Brighton were five stars, that's from my most ex my most recent experiment video. Go check that out. But I'm pretty excited to rebuild Everton for FIFA 18. We did it in FIFA 17, but I feel like this year, there is so much more on the line. No Lukaku and a club that is somewhat in tatters should be a good little challenge here. For those of you who have not seen a rebuilding challenge video yet, here are the rules. So the main objective of this is to take a team to the Champions League final. We will be simulating every single game up until the Champions League final, which we will play ourselves. We can make whatever transfers we like, Realistic, unrealistic, it does not matter. There's a big focus on the transfer window, only showing players that we sign. And finally, don't get butt hurt if I sell your favorite player. Let's get into the rebuild. But if you guys do go on to enjoy today's rebuild episode, make sure that you leave a like on the video and make sure you bloody scorpion kick that subscribe button down below if you are new around here. So here is our starting 11 for this first season. It's a pretty strong side to be fair. Our midfield is ridiculously strong. Like, I had to make some tough decisions on whether I had Gilfie Sigurdsson in there, but I looked at potential, uh, who I put in my actual midfield spots, who went where, because as you can see, our bench is pretty damn strong. The transfers and the improvements I'm looking to make in season one, I want to bring in a top quality striker. Wayne Rooney, 31 years of age, so he's not going to go up in overall. He can't be expected to be our starting striker. Sandro goes up to about an 85 or so rating, so I'm going to keep him for the first few seasons. I'm also going to look at bringing in a top quality, youngish sort of center back because Williams is 32, Jack Yelk is 34, and Funes Mori isn't good enough in terms of overall. And maybe not this season, but definitely the next, go in for a new left back. Leighton Baines, 32 years of age, so of course, he's going to start to decrease as well. But anyways, let's get into the good stuff. Let's get into the transfers. So we have signed ourselves a brand new striker. Our first signing for this Everton rebuild is going to be Marcus Rashford from Manchester United. We've sort of done a reverse Lukaku. Man United get Lukaku. We get Marcus Rashford. The English youngster coming to Everton, coming to Goodison Park for £34 million. Welcome to Everton, Marcus Rashford. Hey guys, just quickly before we get any further in today's rebuild, I'd like to say a massive thank you to OneFootball for once again sponsoring the channel. OneFootball have been a massive supporter of everything we do here, so I'd like to say a big thank you to them. OneFootball is your one-stop destination for all things football news on the mobile. Personally, I use OneFootball to get live score updates from all my favorite leagues around the world, whether it's it is the Premier League and the Bundesliga that is going on whilst I'm sleeping, or it is the A-League that is going on during the day. I love getting the live score updates. It's also a great app in keeping up with all the rumors and the transfer gossip around the world, along with the newest signings, the new
newest injuries, the newest coach sackings. One football really has it all. And the best part, it is free. So definitely give one football a chance. Click on the link that I have put in the description down below or head to the app store today on both iOS and Android and download one football. Once again, a big thank you to one football for sponsoring today's rebuild. Let's get right back into it. Another huge piece of business here, Jonathan Tarr has signed from Leverkusen for £28 million. Great pick up here, great centre back signing. Welcome to Everton, Jonathan Tarr. Our first player departure for this rebuild is going to be Martin Stecklenberg, the Dutch keeper, off the Vicarage Road for two and a half million pounds. We've actually done some efficient business in this series so far, or in this rebuild so far. We've brought ourselves in a brand new left back, Alex Tejas, the Brazilian left back from FC Porto, coming into Everton for 20 and a half million pounds. Another player departure here, we have sold Umar Niasi to Wolverhampton for a pretty decent transfer sum. We managed to sell him to Wolves for £8 million, which I won't complain about, so best of luck, mate. A pretty big name departure here, Seamus Coleman, who is personally one of my favourite players at Everton. I've sold him for £21 million to West Ham United. I couldn't turn that type of money down. He's reached his max potential in the game, and we need to go a step further and improve on him if we want to rebuild Everton and win the Champions League title. So. Best of luck, mate. Let's go get ourselves a brand new right back. So we've signed ourselves a brand new right back. We've replaced Seamus Coleman straight away. Only spent three million pounds, technically. Florenzi comes in for 24 million pounds from Roma. Welcome to Everton, our brand new right back, Alessandro Florenzi. So here we are, one hour to go on transfer deadline day, and we have done some pretty damn good business. Rashford, Tarr, Teas, and Florenzi in. Stecklenberg, Niasi, and Coleman out. This is what our starting 11 now looks like. I am extremely happy with what it is looking like. Let's get into January now and see how we're sitting in the table. Well, we're on the 1st of January 2018 and things aren't exactly going to plan. We are sitting in 13th position on 27 points. Seven wins, six draws, eight losses. Not where we want to be. I was expecting us to be up the other end of the table, maybe pushing for Europa League football. Wasn't expecting Champions League in this first season, but Europa League football at least was a goal. I mean, we're not out of that hunt at the moment at all. We're only, what, eight points off sixth place Chelsea. But I mean, it's still a fair bit of ground to make up with 17 games to go. At the moment, Manchester United, absolutely dominating. 52 points for them, 14 points clear of Man City and Watford. It looks like they've already got the League One. So we've done absolutely no business in this January window. Didn't get any offers that really tempted me. What the hell, Giroud went to Barcelona, but didn't get any offers that tempted me. And with the money that we had, we couldn't really do too much to help the squad, so Sometimes it's like that, but I'll see you guys now at the end of the first season. All right, so here we are at the end of season one. It has not gone to plan. I guess that's what happens when you have such a young core. I expect our team to improve so much more through the seasons, but we're not going to be getting a chance at Champions League football, nor did I expect us to get a chance at Champions League football, but I expected us to finish in the top half of the table. We finish in 12th on 48 points. Manchester United run away with the league, 94 points. And the three teams being relegated are Crystal Palace, Newcastle United, and Huddersfield. In terms of the FA Cup, we were eliminated in the quarterfinals by Leicester. And we didn't even make it to the last 16 of the League Cup. Bayern Munich won the Champions League. And Real Sociedad won the Europa League. Now, I know for a fact that we made it to the last 32. Here we go. So we played Villarreal, won 1-0 in the first leg. And I'm assuming we lost in the second leg. Where are we? There we are. No, we won 1 0. And where's the second leg? Oh, okay, we lost 2 0 in the second leg. So here we are at the end of the first season. Results wise, pretty damn bad. In terms of who we signed and all that good stuff, 
pretty damn good. I'm excited to see the squad hopefully grow further in Season 2. And fingers crossed we can qualify for European football next year. Or at least just do better than 13. We're kicking off our second season with a huge signing. We've blown basically all of our budget to get this guy. But Andre Gomsch, I've done my research, I've gone to the official UEFA website and found out how to pronounce his last name. I'm probably still going to get it wrong, but Andre Gomsch is coming to Everton for £60 million. What a signing. Welcome, mate. So we have sold a player here, one of our younger sort of left back players, Anthony Robinson is off to PSG for £920,000. So here we are on transfer deadline day and we've sold one of our star players, Adrisa Gay is off to Chelsea for £30 million. We were stacked in the midfield and it makes sense to get rid of him for such a large amount of cash. But we've got one hour left on transfer deadline day, so I'm going to keep that money that we got for Idrissa Gay and see where we can use it best come January. Maybe we'll go in for a pre-contract, maybe we'll sign another decent superstar to our squad, but only the one transfer, Andre Gormish coming in, Robinson and Gay coming out. I'll see you guys in January. So this season so far is proving to be a complete contrast to last season. The 1st of January 2019, we are sitting one point behind Manchester United in second position. That is an immense rise from this time last year. Although that being said, it is so tight in this competition. We're only one loss away from being in fourth position. So we definitely have to stay on our toes for the second half of the season, but positive sign. Let's get into January now and see if we can do some business. So here we are, fellas. We're in pre-contract negotiation talks with Thibaut Courtois, and we are about to pull off an absolute steal. Yes, we have Jordan Pickford, but you can't turn up Getting in Thibaut Courtois, who is 90 overall at the moment, only 26 years of age, on a free transfer. We're going to accept that next season, we get Thibaut Courtois on a free. So, soon to say welcome to Everton, Thibaut Courtois. So, this is going to sound like a really weird transfer, but we've brought in Thomas Muller to the club. Now, we've signed him for £25 million in exchange for Sandro. Now, some of you guys might be thinking, Jared, what are you doing? Sandro is a high potential quality youngster. Think about it. He has a potential of 85. He's 81 rated at the moment. Muller's already 86 rated and he's at 29. So arguably we have two seasons where he's gonna be around this 85, 86 mark. And Sandro probably won't be at that 85 mark by then. If we haven't completed the challenge by the time Muller starts to decrease rapidly, then we'll sell Muller, we'll take the L, and we'll buy another world-class striker. But at the moment, I think it's a really good picker. And I really want to make a push to win the Premier League title. But most importantly, qualify for the Champions League. So, that being said, welcome to Everton, Thomas Muller. And I mean, with that Thomas Muller signing, this is what our starting 11 looks like right now. That is an impressive side. Think about it. If we have 90 rated Thibaut Courtois next season, there is no reason why we can't have a good run at the Champions League title if we manage to qualify for it this year. And with the squad we have right now, there's no reason why we can't qualify. So one hour to go here on deadline day. It has been a big January transfer window. Thomas Muller in, Sandro out, and of course Thibaut Courtois in next season on a free transfer. So that is insanity. I'll see you guys now at the end of this season. Hopefully we make Champions League. So here we are at the end of the season and we have not moved. We finish in second position, three points behind Manchester United. What an incredible second season this was. I mean, I said at the end of last season that hopefully our younger players that we invested in would grow and get us near Champions League spot, but I did not expect a title race. And with Thomas Muller coming in, that helped us out a lot. I'm pretty excited to see what we're going to do next season with Courtois coming in as our keeper. 
And then I'm hoping to make another big name midfield signing and replace Morgan Schneiderlin. Looking at the teams that are going down, QPR and Norwich go right down again, and then Brighton will join them. In the FA Cup, we didn't even make it to the last 16 this year, which was a bit surprising. And in the League Cup, we lost in the last 16 on penalties to Bournemouth. Chelsea won the Champions League over Juventus, and Marseille beat Liverpool on penalties to win the Europa League final. So here's a look at our squad report at the end of this second season and I'm really excited by it. the squad we've built so far I said it a few times but I genuinely think with a couple of big name signings we could give the Champions League a good run do I expect us to win it next season I don't but do I think we can go deep into the knockout rounds I do so as I said, probably want to look at bringing in a high 80 rated center midfielder to complement our already stacked midfield and help us look a lot better. Sell on a lot of the older players that are still worth a fair bit in this squad and have a good run at building a world class side. It already is world class in my opinion, but it could get even better from this point on. Also, just for reference, Phil Jagielka. His contract is about to expire, and I can't renew it, which means he is retiring, so congrats on the great career, Phil Jagielka. So if Season 1 was considered to be a bit of a failure, Season 2 is the polar opposite. What a season! We're going to be playing Champions League football next season, and we're going to get Courtois in. Let's get into that. So you remember last season when I said I wanted to bring in a world-class midfielder? We've done just that. Tolisso, Corentin Tolisso, has joined the club from Bayern Munich for £70 million plus Morgan Schneiderlin. It is a big transfer, but it is going to be worth it. The Frenchman is 87 rated and he makes our squad look impeccable. Our first player departure for this season is going to be John Joe Kenny, who is off to Sheffield United for £930,000. So now that we have Thibaut Courtois, it just made sense for us to sell Jordan Pickford. Thank you for your service, mate, but he is now off to the Olympic Stadium. He is off to West Ham for £22.8 million. So I was looking at our squad and I thought, if we are any chance of winning the Champions League this season, we need insurance. We need a new backup striker just in case we get injuries to Muller or Rashford. So I've gone ahead and signed Stefan Jovetic on a three-year deal, £16.2 million plus Luke Garbutt. Don't ask me why, Monaco wanted a left back, but that's a decent signing. He's going to be handy to have coming off the bench and can offer a reliable backup plan. So welcome to Everton, Stevan Jovetic. So one of my favorite Everton players in real life has just been sold. Kevin Morales is off to AC Milan, 11.7 million pounds. Best of luck, Kevin. All right, so I've been trying to sell him virtually since season one, but Ashley Williams has finally left the club. Only 3.4 million pounds, but he's off to Leipzig now. So here we are on transfer deadline day with another signing, another insurance signing just like Jovetic. It is Chancel Mbemba from Newcastle United. The 25-year-old centre-back has signed for 13.4 million pounds. Welcome to Everton Mbemba. So with two hours remaining on transfer deadline day, Lokomotiv Moscow have bought Nikola Vlasic from us. I believe he is from the Czech Republic. Anyways, he is off to Lokomotiv Moscow for 5.6 million pounds. So we have had a very busy window. Tolisso, Jovetic and Mbemba in, and I guess you could say Courtois as well. And then Kenny Pickford, Morales, Williams and Schneiderlin all out. Our squad is looking legit. Like, look at that. That is so solid. And then you look at our bench. We've got coverage all over. I've got to put... I actually need to put Mbemba in there. So we've got Funes Mori and Mbemba to help out as well. But our squad is looking really damn good. Let's go have a look at our Champions League group now. So here is our group for our opening endeavor in the Champions League. We're in Group H and we have a pretty interesting group. By far, Atletico Madrid are going to be our toughest opponents. Then we've got Saint Etienne and Basel. So I'm confident we can finish top two, but we'll have to be on our game. 
Anyways, what I do is I simulate to the end of our group stages. So you'll be able to see those results in three, two, one. So we actually killed it here. We are doing so well. We finish top of our group on 13 points. Four wins, one draw, one loss. Atletico Madrid unsurprisingly come through with us. Let's have a quick gander at who we're playing. Where are we? Oh, there we are. Bayern Munich in the Champions League last 16. Come on, I didn't know our name was Arsenal. That is so frustrating. It's going to be a good test nonetheless, but oh, Bayern Munich. I didn't want to face them till the final. So here we are on the 1st of January 2020, I believe it is. And we are top of the Premier League table by one point. Us and Chelsea are sort of running away with it. It's only six points, but it's still a nice little gap to have. Well, I mean, seven points for our six for Chelsea. Taking a look at the drop zone, it is West Brom, Burnley, and Wolves all down there. So Cuco Martina has been sold to Aston Villa. Another one of those players that has just taken a long time to sell, but he's off to Villa Park. Again, not too busy of a window. Our squad's pretty impressive. I think if we don't win the Champions League this year, then we'll have a fair bit of work to do next year to kind of refresh things and have another crack, but I'm pretty determined on winning it this year. Let's get into our first round of 16 game now against bloody Bayern Munich. That's gonna be a, that's gonna be a real challenge. Here we go, boys. Our first real challenge for this rebuild. Oh, hey, against Bayern Munich. This could go one of two ways. Either we absolutely kill it and fills me with confidence or we fail big time. Sigurdsson comes in. We're getting away goal in the sixth minute. All right, I've got a bit of confidence at the moment, but Sigurdsson comes in because Klaassen is injured, so he comes into the starting 11, but we have an away goal. They get an equalizer through Serge Nabry, which is not what we want. Can we get a second away goal? That would be huge. Come on, fellas. Barkley gets us a goal. Barkley gets... No, they equalize, but we've got two away goals. That is pretty good heading into the second leg. It is the moment of truth, fellas. We are back at home, back at Goodison Park. We do have Davy Klaassen back into the starting 11. Come on, we can't let them score. Biggest thing is not letting them score. I mean, that's the, that's the matter of the fact in a lot of football games, but especially important here. If it's a draw, we go through. Rashford gets us a goal. We're 3-2 up. And we have a two goal away advantage. We can't let them score. Or if they keep it at a draw, we go through on away goals. 15 minutes to 15 minutes to go. 10 minutes to go. Come on, surely we're through. Yes. Yes. We're through. Marcus Rashford's goal in the first half. Sees us defeat Bayern Munich. And now I have a lot of confidence going forward. So the quarterfinals of the Champions League is an all English affair here as we take on Spurs. They knocked out AS Monaco last time. And um, there's a few a few underdogs in here, a few surprise wins in there, like Leverkusen, they defeated Real Madrid. And I guess really that's the only real big upset. But let's focus on ourselves and let's try knocking out Tottenham. All right, so it's time for the quarterfinals here. We are at home. We are at Goodison Park. A big loss is Keane. Keane is out for six weeks with a torn hamstring. So Funes Mori comes in, 81 rated. I'm praying it doesn't cost us, but Spurs have a really strong side. Ali, uh, Kane, Ericsson, all these guys will be high rated by now. Same with DeVrij, who they signed. We almost signed him at the start of this rebuild. And DeVrij gets them an away goal, so that's not the start we're after. Rashford equalizes, so that's one all, but we need a second goal to make things a little bit more comfortable in our favor. Come on, can we get one late? Let's not concede one late. One all heading into the second leg at Wembley. Here we go, the second leg of our Champions League quarterfinals away at Wembley Stadium. I mean, in real life, if this was a real fixture, we'd be playing at the new White Hart Lane, but obviously it's not in FIFA yet, so we have to play at Wembley, and we have to get an away goal. They have a one-all scoreline, but they have the away goal advantage. Rashford does it for us in the 24th minute. Get in there, Marcus Rashford. Come on, let's just keep it at this. Defense. Hold on, Funes Mori's off, Jovic, why is, wait, why is both our defenders off? Why are both our defenders off? We've got Jovic playing, and it looks like we're going to extra time. No Florenzi in the 86th minute, but I can't understand those substitutions. 
Did we bring... Well, were we playing three at the back or something? That is stupid, but thank God it doesn't cost us. We go through to the Champions League semi-final. Another all-English affair here. Champions League semi-finals, we take on Manchester United. Another very tough opponent. They always seem to be very strong in career mode, and the winner of our semi-final clash will take on Juventus or Barcelona. They had a nil-all draw in the first leg, but let's just focus on ourselves. I said I was feeling confident at the start of the season, and let's see if that confidence can get us all the way to a Champions League final in only season three, which I'm kind of surprised about. Away at Old Trafford here for the first leg. Come on, this is going to be a tough, tough challenge. I'm sure they'll have Pogba. I'm sure they'll have a million strikers. They'll have Lukaku. They've got De Gea. They've got Martial. They've got two Lukakus. Okay, it's a brotherly affair. They've got Kovacic, who gives them the lead. Oh, no. Come on. Near halftime. Can we get an away goal? We don't want to be ding too hard. Zlatan and Komen on for them. Half an hour. Get us an away goal. Yes. Tejas, our left back, comes up in the clutch. Come on. Five minutes to go. Can we get a second one? No, we can't. It is the same scenario we had as against Spurs. All right, it is do or die. This is the moment of truth. Are we headed to the Champions League final or are we gonna fall short at the final hurdle? We are at home here against Manchester United. Jonathan Tarr is out through suspension, but fortunately Keane is back. Well, he's not fully fit, but he has to come in. We need to score. We don't really actually need to score. We just need to not let them score because we have the away goal advantage. Come on, fellas. Just keep... If, if it stays like this, I am happy. Funes Mori gets a yellow card. No injuries, no goals, and you'll see a very happy Jared HD. 25 minutes. 20 minutes. Come on, please. Fall into our arms. Let us get into the Champions League final. Come on. Come on. Yes, that is exactly what we wanted. No injuries, no cards besides Funes Mori, who really doesn't matter, and no goals. Everton are through to the Champions League final. It doesn't get much bigger than this. We are taking on Barcelona in the Champions League final. They took down Juventus in the semis. This is going to be an extremely tough game. Taking a look at some of the other results, Villarreal won the Europa League final. We won the Premier League title. Get in there, five points clear of Chelsea. Most importantly though, that means if we lose to Barcelona today, we get another shot in Season 4. The three teams going down are Bournemouth, West Brom, and Wolverhampton. We also won the Community Shield 2-0 over uh, Manchester United, which is good to see. We were eliminated in the semi-finals of the FA Cup to Chelsea, who ended up losing the final to West Ham. Jeez, we've had a real good season. We ended up defeating Wolves in the Cup Final, the League Cup Final, to win that. How about that semi-final performance? as well. Of course, we always have a look at our squad report before we get into the Champions League final, regardless of whether we win the final or not, but our squad has been built to perfection. From season two onwards, I thought we had a Champions League winning squad, and it's just gotten stronger and stronger, and I don't see any reason why we shouldn't win it today. This has probably been one of the best rebuilds in terms of results and like how long it's taken us to get to the final with the squad we had to begin with it seemed pretty strong. I wouldn't have thought it would have taken us three seasons to get there with Chelsea. I mean, Everton, excuse me. I thought it would have taken four or five seasons to get to the final, but here we are in season three with a real good shot of completing it. So let's get into the Champions League final against Barcelona. Oh, they come down and
Barcelona versus Everton. Can we deliver a Champions League title here to Goodison Park? Let's find out. I can see the man through. That's a perfect ball there to Leo Messi. We're chasing. Messi almost gives Barcelona the lead. Looking to get through. We've timed some very poor challenges here. Gomish getting back there, but they're going into the area. Dennis Suarez through to Le uh, Luis Suarez. Back to Suarez. Oh my God, we are on the ropes at the moment. Passing it around here. Going through. Nice ball there. Rashford on the angle. We're going to try through the legs to Stegen. Follow up. Who's that? Oh my God, Barkley. I thought he was going to tap that one in. Here we go. Klaassen over the top. Muller brings it down. Muller hits it. Is that a penalty? No, it's a goal kick. That's disappointing. Poor touch from Dembele. And now we're on the attack again. We've started to find our way into this one. Make the run, Barkley. We go through. Ross Barkley plays it through. Klaassen on the angle. Gives us the lead. Domi Klaassen. Been here since day one. He gives us the lead against Barcelona. We could have had the shot with Barkley, but it was unselfish play to tap it one more pass and get us a better look. And we have the lead here against Barcelona. It has been end-to-end stuff. Oh, there's a nice ball there from Messi, who goes to Luis Suarez. We're just jockeying with Jonathan Tarr. Going back here. They're passing it around. Delefeu, former Everton player. Going there. Going through to Sampa. What a save from Courtois. We can't get the follow-up, though. Get it away. No, they've still got it here. Dennis Suarez in the area. Don't overcommit. We've given them space. They've passed us to death. Messi misses. Honestly, Barcelona have made some uncharacteristic misses. Maybe it was his footing, but we should have been conceding there. Muller. Yeah, still on, though. Thomas Muller. Going to Barkley. We see you out wide, Tejas. Going to go early there. Playing it through. Muller gets in front of the defender. 2-0. What? Barcelona have been by far the better team. But we are 2-0 up here. I know some of you guys are going to accuse me of sliders. I need to show you. That's just something I need to do to prove my innocence. Look at this. The computer. They're all on 50. Us, the user. We're all on 50. There is no sliders here. It is just us making the most of our chances, and Thomas Muller extends our lead. I thought for sure we stuffed it up. I don't know how Muller got in front of that defender, but he has just gone beast mode, and what a finish. We can't let them get back into this one. They beat Florenzi, but they're still attacking. Going back here to Delefeu. They put that one in the area. Good stuff from Keane. Now can we hit them on the counter? Imagine if we made it 3-0 before halftime. It's a beautiful ball. Can he get past PK? Rashford does. Rashford makes it 3-0. Oh my God. We have absolutely put Barcelona to shame. Half an hour into it, we are 3-0 up. PK has been out-muscled by Marcus Rashford. Oh my God. Suarez looking to give Barcelona a glimmer of hope in this one. It's going to have to be a huge comeback if they want to get into it. We need to stay strong, though. We can't let them get back into it. Sampa, Sergi Sampa hits the post. They get the follow-up. They hit the crossbar again. Barcelona have hit the post and the crossbar. We might be on the counter-attack here. No, we're not. They're trying to attack again. Barcelona, honestly, had they deserve to be 3-0 up here. They go back to Suarez. The ball is magnetic. The ball is magnetic. Oh, my God. If you define luck, it comes up saying Jared HD today. Oh, my. They're still on the attack, though, here. They've gotten past some weak defending. PK, not PK. He goes and chips, and he misses. Messi running through here. We can't give him space. Beautiful defense there from Keane. Now he's going to trot up the field. He's going to go Rashford to Barkley. Up against David Luiz. We've got the jump on him. Barkley on the angle. Can he make it four? Now he's hitting the crossbar. This would have to be one of the weirdest halves of FIFA I have ever played. Suarez looking to get a goal here for Barcelona before the end of the half. Messi running through. Beautiful ball to Suarez. What a save, Courtois. That is what happens when you have a 92 rated keeper. We haven't cleared that one, but the referee called half time. Thank you, referee. What a half. Barcelona are looking to give themselves a glimmer of hope in this one. We just have to remain composed. 
Keep doing what we've been doing. That's a nice ball through to Delafayu, though. Florenzi's been caught out a few times here, but that's a beautiful tackle. Shouldn't have passed it across the face of goals, but now we are on the counter. Tolisso running through, going there to Muller. Goes to Rashford. Goes to Barkley. Ross Barkley. Can he finish it? Ross Barkley straight into Stegen. Muller, the follow-up blocked from Alba. It's still on, though. Come on. Gomish against his former club. Ah, oh. Florenzi going there to Tolisso. Going there to Ross Barkley. Through. Finish it. Rashford. Oh, my God. Was that saved or did, you, did he just flat out miss it? Here we go. Tolisso going to Rashford. Through. Lovely. Oh, Muller. Beautiful move to slip past the defender. Just lack the finish. Barcelona and Leo Messi with a terrific position here to get a goal back. I don't think it's going to affect the final outcome too much. Messi's going to pile that one. Messi almost a ripper of a free kick. Barcelona looking to get themselves a goal. It's not going to change the final score, but now we're on the counter. Tolisso, he's going to play that one through to Muller. Would have liked to have a little bit more momentum, but we're going to go through again. Come on, we just need to defeat David Luiz. Tolisso wraps it up. There it is. We're going to complete the rebuild with Everton. Quarantine Tolisso, an absolute rocket on the counter. What a, what a celebration, and we are 4-0 up against Barcelona. That is a statement I did not think I would be saying today. Oh my goodness me. It's one thing to be 4-0 up against Barcelona in the Champions League final, but somebody tell me how they have not scored a goal. Good stuff, Tolly. So he's had a great game here. Look at the numbers. That's how you know Barcelona are pushing numbers forward. We might be able to make it five here. Rashford squares it. Ross Barkley, that is five. That is embarrassing for Barcelona. Oh my God, that is incredibleness. I can't believe we are 5-0 up. Barcelona have not turned up today. And this might just be the weirdest game of FIFA I have ever played. There might be time for a sixth goal here. Barkley through to Rashford. Come on, embarrass the Marcus. Oh, what a tackle, Usman Dembele. That will probably be the Champions League final. There it is. Another rebuild complete. And that is the biggest win we have had in rebuild history. 5-0. Barcelona have been embarrassed here, but we have rebuilt Everton within three seasons. One of the best efficient rebuilds we have ever done. I hope you guys enjoyed today's rebuild. If you did, make sure you leave a like on the video. Bloody Scorpion, kick that subscribe button down below if you are new around here. And make sure you check out my social media links. My Instagram and my Twitter, both will be linked down below. But most importantly, fellas, I hope you have a fantastic day. It has been Jared HD here. I'm out. Peace.